Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to explore the inverse hyperbolic secant of x. We're going to try to find the expression. And so when we let y equal the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, then of course, x equals the hyperbolic secant of y. And since the hyperbolic secant is equal to one over the hyperbolic cosine, it can be written like this in terms of the exponentials. Therefore, x can be said equal to this. And now all we have to do is solve this for y. The reason why we do that is because here we defined y as being equal to the inverse hyperbolic secant of x. And so therefore, solving that for y will allow us to figure out what that is equal to. So again, what we do is we're going to cross multiply. So this becomes x times e to the y plus x times e to the minus y equals 2. And then we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the y. That's the same trick as we've been using. So this becomes x e to the 2y plus x, because e to the y times e to the minus y is 1, and that equals 2e to the y. And then if we move everything over to one side, we can then write that x e to the 2y minus 2e to the y plus x equals 0. And now we recognize that we have a quadratic equation in terms of e to the y. We can then solve for e to the y by saying this is equal to the negative of the middle term, which is positive 2, plus or minus the square root of this term, minus 2 quantity squared, minus 4, times a, which is x, times c, which is x as well. Notice that all this will be divided by 2 times a or 2 times x. Notice then when we square this, we get 4, and so we have 4 and a 4 there. We can factor out a 4, so that becomes e to the y is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared, all divided by 2x. And then you realize we can divide by 2, and we get e to the y is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root, oh, not 2, because I divided by 2, so this is 1 plus or minus 1 minus x squared divided by x. Now, when we think about it, we can get rid of the negative here, because the equation, if we look at the, what that looks like on a graph, it's going to look something like this. When x equals 1, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, which means that when x goes to 0, if we allow this to be a minus, we get 1 minus basically the square root of 1, which is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, so we get e to the y equal to 0 in the numerator, and it would be 0 divided by 0, so we get a 0 over 0 condition, we don't want to go there, that's one of the parts that we don't want, so we want to get rid of the negative sign, and only allow the positive which matches the graph we're expecting. But next, we still need to get rid of the e to the y component, we want just y, so we're going to take the natural log of both sides, so when we take the natural log of e to the y, that is equal to the natural log of what we have on the right side, which is going to be 1 over x times 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared, like that. And then, of course, on the left side, the natural log of e to the y is simply y, so we get y is equal to the natural log of 1 over x times the quantity 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And notice, based on our graph, we then realize that 0 should be smaller than x, which should be smaller than 1. So I guess it could be equal to 1. Yeah, if x is equal to 1, that would be OK. So I guess smaller than or equal to 1. That's the range of possible values that we can have for x. Finally, what we're going to now say is that since y is equal to this, we can now say that the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is equal to the natural log of 1 over x times 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And finally, what we could also say is that this, the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, can be written as the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1 over x. So both of these are good expressions to indicate the value for the inverse hyperbolic secant of x. 
Now, to show that that's true, we went over here. Here we have an expression for the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x to be equal to this. So when we write the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1 over x, we should get this. And this should be equal to what we have over there. Let's try to show that that's indeed the case. So we're going to write this as the natural log of 1 over x plus, in this case, we have the square root of 1 over x squared minus 1. And now we're going to find the common denominator for this. So this is equal to the natural log of 1 over x plus, in this case, we get the square root of 1 minus x squared over x squared, which means we can pull out a 1 over x. So this is equal to the natural log of 1 over x plus 1 over x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And finally, we can factor out a 1 over x, so this becomes equal to the natural log of 1 over x times 1, and I forgot to put a line there, plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And notice that this quantity right here is exactly the same as what we have over here, so we can definitely say that the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is indeed equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1 over x. So there you go, that's how we figured that out.